exactly. <laughs> so it, it is episode 666. I want to talk about hmm. some spooky things. So as as far as demons know, your demon knowledge, Wendigo. Mm-hmm. Yes. You've looked into it a ton. Mm-hmm. What's like a an indicator to you when you're reading a demon story that mm-hmm. you're like, this is made up, this is fake. And what are the ones that get you like, oh, I kind of buy this. I think this could be a real one. So the thing that's like, as someone who like, you know, believes in it, like I'm a Christian, I'm not, I'm not like some levels of religious Christians will get to where it's like, like recently I covered a video game called Faith that revolves demons and talking to the creator. He's like, yeah, I get emails all the time from people who think if you put like a pentagram in a game, you're going to hell. Like, obviously that's not the level I'm at. You've seen the content I cover. Um, But as far as like reading stories about demonology or whatever, it's typically the theatrics of it. Um, For that same reason, I believe possessions can happen, but I believe that like 99% of them are fake. Uh, because a, a demon's MO or like in within Christianity, right? Like the devil's MO isn't to scare people or be weird and strange. <laughs> like he, yeah. he's not just creeping around like, hoo ha, they're going to be so afraid of this one. Uh, that's mm-hmm. what most like demon stories revolve around. It's just to divert people. It's just to point them away from God or Christianity or what have you. Uh, most examples of demonic influence throughout like the Bible or old like, you know, religious traditions aren't even people who are like, you know, frothing at the mouth, possessed, yelling obscenities. That's not even what they do. Most of what they do is just being like leaders, people who will, you know, take the poor and the hungry and push them back to some righteous way until eventually bringing them into cult Mm -hmm. activities or what have you. Um, I would, I would say that there's in my belief, there's a lot more possessed people in places of power or what have you than there are like, you know, satanic cult members like the, the church of Satan and the satanic Bible. And that's, that's just poser stuff. That's all a joke, but the real stuff, so to speak, is just manipulation. Um, $50 wasted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Lifetime membership be for Kyle. Take There's like Rube. I pay dues, th- God damn it. This is horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing that like I've researched lately, there's kind of a white whale for me in demonology of like something that I think would make a really cool video that I think I could dissect, but I'm a little afraid to. Uh, mm. is this thing called um the Lesser Key of Solomon? Are you familiar with it? Is anyone familiar with it? Mm-mm. So I have heard of this. Yes. Yeah. So the lesser key of Solomon is a book that was its final version. Like the version that exists now was assembled around like 1720, like just pre America or pre, you know, government America. Uh, But the writings of it supposedly trace all the way back to like 800, 900 BC. Um, So in the original, like Judaism lore and by extension Christianity, but primarily Judaism, uh, when Solomon, the son of King David, built the temple in Jerusalem, uh, he used all of his wisdom and power to do it. Uh, it's believed in most uh, Abrahamic religions that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived uh, because he asked the Lord for wisdom. The Lord gave him wisdom, blah, blah, blah. So Solomon, being the wisest man who ever lived, was able to use a lot of powers of spirituality to build the temple. And again, in Judaism, it's believed, maybe not in their canon, but at least in, you know, Judaism adjacent beliefs, that he effectively enslaved several demons to commission the building of the temple. That's how the temple was built in record time. There's all this weird stuff with the temple, like the geometry of it is so perfectly done, like the way the walls are cut. It doesn't make sense for something done, you know, in in BC time period. It's like Mm -hmm. an architectural marvel for the time that it was built. So one of the beliefs is that he used demons to do that. The lesser key of Solomon uh, was supposedly assembled by his workers, or the human workers at least, in the construction of the temple. The Masons, as they were called, which is where the Freemasons eventually get their name. They use a lot of the symbols and stuff from Solomon's builders. And there's whole connections between demonology and Freemasonry. That's that's another can of worms. But (laughs) with the construction of Solomon's temple... It's believed that perhaps he enslaved demons. So a book called The Lesser Key of Solomon is the traditional beliefs of supposedly how Solomon managed to enslave these demons. So it is a book that is made up of 72 different demons that describes their name, uh, their MO, what they do, what they look like, how they appear, as well as summoning rituals. So like the things you're supposed to draw 
the things you have to do to bring them in. And going back to what I mentioned earlier of like the thing that tips me off demon stories are fake is the theatrics of it. The way that like you summon most of the demons in this book is like, forget to pray for a day or um oh, no pre- or, or yeah exactly yeah it's, <laughs> which is so much more menacing than just like oh dude you know cut yourself and draw blood yeah. or whatever i need it, a bunch of chickens and you know. exactly it, it'll be like forget to pray for a day or uh don't spend any money today instead leave it uh leave it uh near your bed or like put the money under your bed or stuff like that like these subtle things that you don't think about at once but it's slowly lulls you into this idea of either self-reliance or trusting a demon in some sense stop stop looking to god for all your answers just you can take care of yourself you should be looking to yourself for answers Mm -hmm. and then by the end of it it gives you summoning rituals and what you can ask of these demons so there's some that will give you wealth there's some that will give you love and again the most demonic stories in pop culture are around, you know, oh, this d- this demon wants to damn your soul to hell. They want to curse you and blah, blah, blah. But again, the way it's normally given throughout Christianity's lore is they want to give you good things. They want you to trust them. They want you to come over to their side because their ultimate goal is to put you to point you away from what's mm-hmm. true and holy. So because mm-hmm. of that, there's nothing in the Lesser Key of Solomon that says, And if you do this, uh, your house will burn down or you have to sacrifice your firstborn. It's all like you'll get money and then everything will be good. Look at that. You did it yourself. And because of that, it is the most menacing. It scares me so much. The concepts of it, it bothers me because like. Yeah, you hear all these stories like you want you on YouTube. How many, you know, oh, summoning the devil at 3 a.m. videos, whatever. Like sure. all those are clearly fake. But if someone was to do like a lesser key of Solomon, they're like, oh, look at that. <laughs> My stocks went up this week. How mm-hmm. lovely. Absolutely not. <laughs> it, it terrifies me. So I've thought about doing a video on that. But again, as someone who truly does believe in it, at least to a degree, I am so afraid of like. Being like, okay, hey kids, so this is the demon's name, uh, and here's his sigil. Be sure to draw this on your bathtub or whatever. Like, yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Power that a demon could 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 have through you with your audience. Exactly. You could, yeah. You could you yeah. could put something out there that was seemingly innocuous and and get thousands of people around the world to do it. Rituals, mm-hmm. incantations, blood, rit- all sorts of things, sacrifices. Yeah. He's already made me yeah. decide to spend money every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just I haven't safe. remembered to pray in a minute. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little worried about that. I just look, the thing is, if there was a demon out there, like uh, I like the crossroads demons analogy or, or not example and uh, supernatural. Mm-hmm. Basically, you go somewhere to, to the crossroads at midnight on wherever the fuck demon's going to show up, make a bargain with this guy, the sort of thing like save my baby's life and he's like all right but you know i get your soul in 40 years that sort of thing mm-hmm. if that were available we would do there'd be a line <laughs> there'd be a line <laughs> there'd be a line of people tiktoking their deals right? absolutely like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it no would be joke. a reality show where the the devil could make his own reality show with horns and like hell in the background here's last last season's losers and they're back there screaming and 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 eternal flames and people would come <laughs> right on the show and try that yeah that's yeah, terrible yeah. like basic macronomics tells us that as you increase the supply right this line that the deals they strike will get worse and worse you'll be <laughs> trading your soul for like a tank of gas <laughs> <laughs> it's a tank of uh, gas co- economy's runs getting out. tough Woody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i got had by the crossroads demon because of inflation soul inflation <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, they shut off the markets because the supply of souls is too much and they don't need to intake anymore. You know, the exporting is already enough of a hassle. It's oh like, yeah, the demonic Fed is raising <laughs> rates. You can have you, you can only have so many people who are rulers of the world, you know, so like that, that's getting complicated. Yeah. yeah, you got the demons have to be like, who wants something like less, like way, way, way less? <laughs> like we'll take senator, a port, a port, a state <laughs> senator. I got plenty of souls around here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Senator. I don't know, I'm senator. Anytime, just let me know. We've, we've got a couple positions we can fill out. Uh, Midwest states, if you're cool with Kentucky's that. He's about to open up, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can be the president. Hear me out. <laughs> Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd rather I'd rather be a middle class person. First here. president of Somalia. <laughs> Dude, well, what I'm learning from this, you're saying the demons, they 
aren't traditionally scary in that way, which actually checks out with Christianity. Like they want to imbue you with pride or one mm-hmm. of the, the sins of, of thinking you can get ahead. But they also help people. They do things mm-hmm. like curing the blind by the thousands, curing the deaf, mm-hmm. the deaf by the, the death, thousands. The deaf, the yeah, de- yeah. Curing the deaf, yes. The deaf. So is this, does that make you give any more thought to the Mr. Mark of the Beast theory? Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you, wait, Miss, Mr. Mark of the Beast? You're talking yeah. about the Mark of the Beast from Revelations, right? Yes, with Mr. Well, Beast. You've uh, seen those people on... <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mark of the Beast. Have, have you, have you seen those people I did, on... I did have not. you had I chocolate think... yet? Have you taken it into your body yet? Have you seen those people on Twitter? Beast? There's a bunch of people on Twitter who are... I should have known that's where that was going, Christ. but that blindsided me. Thank you, Taylor. <laughs> Yeah, like th- there's a lot of people online that are convinced that he's trying to pull the wool over people's eyes by <laughs> pulling the wool off of their eyes. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's interesting. Now, I won't say to Mr. B specifically, uh, but, but so. that, that <laughs> man, I have to give a good transition before I talk about this, or else it could get clipped so easily. Yeah. But not <laughs> Mr. Beast, but insert another person is similar to a lot of Christian ideas around like the Antichrist, right? Like <laughs> the purpose of the Antichrist is to unite the nations. It's it's not that the devil needs to win. He just needs God to lose, right? That's that's his whole purpose. So mm-hmm. not, like for one, the devil's a losing battle. The devil knows it's a losing battle. He's just trying to get as many souls as he can while he's there. And what's the better way to get people's souls by, you know, tormenting them, making their neck spin around and like float off beds or to be an administer of wealth and, you know, knowledge, prosperity, what have you. Um, sure. uh, and it's interesting to see like the shift that that had because previous to, I would say, Enlightenment era, all stories around demonic activity were about that. It was always about like deals with the devil that were made of like the devil was portrayed as like a, a false member of the clergy or perhaps a ruler or a king who'd come to people and give them, you know, wealth and wisdom. The stories like Faust, you know, capitalize on a lot of those legends. Mm. But then after the Enlightenment era, after the in time where um, it, it like the religious tone shifted from you know, God being prosperous, the devil being prosperous, but God being a true prosper in like the afterlife, once it shifted to these kind of black and white ideas of good and evil, like the devil, you know, pitchfork, horns, going around trying to torment people. Once that cultural idea shifted, then our stories around the devil shifted. It went from, you know, kind of this this person who wants to give you what you want into someone trying to trick you or someone nefarious looking to uh, cause harm or kill as many people as he can. But again, to Christianity and Judaism, that's that's not what that's not his MO. That's not what he's trying I to do. I could leave that about the mm-hmm. devil. That makes sense. If you've got some sort of figurehead, he's got he's got his own plans. Yeah. But what about a rogue demon? That seems more interesting to me. <laughs> so that, that's. <laughs> That's an interesting point. It's something I think about a lot with these things, because there, again, a lot of the stories in the Bible around demon, like he's described or, or uh, around the devil, Satan's described as the morning star, right? He's described as beautiful, conniving, wise and stuff like that. But there's also stories about unwise demons seem like you said, rogue demons, just their own things. Like, for example, the story of the maniac from Gadir. Uh, he was a guy said to be to be possessed by thousands of demons uh, and he would wander the tombs. Himself. He had broken chains because the people of the village tried to chain him and he would snap the chains and run into the countryside. Uh, and whenever he approached Jesus uh, and Jesus looked at him and he fell to the ground, Jesus said, who art thou? And the maniac we replied, are legion. we are legion for we are many. Yeah, which is where that that's why that line gets pulled into every you know demonic story or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it says that uh, Jesus banished the demons from him. And the demons went into swine that were in the countryside and the swine ran off a cliff like they were crazed. So that's very different from like, you know, the conniving dealing devil. That's just like wild. That's what Constantine does. If you watch the movie Constantine with Keanu Reeves. Now, I'm sure Mm. they made this shit up for the fucking movie. They're like, so maybe we just throw the demon in like a pig and then kill the pig. (laughs) No, that's they threw it in a mirror and then shattered the mirror. Mm. I saw a movie recently with... um, who who used to who, uh, the gladiator guy? He's fat now. Um, Simon Russell, Russell Crowe. Crow. Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe uh, made this movie like this year called The Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, I'm sure it's yep. based on probably the last official Catholic exorcist or, or whatever. Probably I don't know, but it's you know it's a, it's a silly movie. But at one point he takes the 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 demon and puts it in a pig and then kills the pig. <laughs> and I I can't remember if it was a real demon but or if it was just to 
you know, go through the ritual for the yeah, yeah. mentally ill kid there. I, I can't remember if they said which it was, but I like both of those ideas a lot. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that we could maybe, and you know, that's what happens in the exorcist. Spoiler alert is father Karis. Was it like, mm-hmm. like lets the demon into his body and then, uh, and then throws himself Flies out, out the window. window. Yeah. yeah. Did he throw himself out or did the demon throw the body out because it couldn't stand to be within the pure body of the priest. I think the demon threw his body out. It couldn't cohabitate in a body so, you know, that also had God in it, perhaps. Yeah. I like because that. Like, because Pazuzu the... shows up in the sequels, right? So then, canonically, it well, would be that the demon threw him out. Uh, what's his name? Blatty is the writer, I think. Mm-hmm. It's got He's got three names. William blah, 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 Blatty or whatever the fuck. Exodus 3 is the true kind of sequel. Yeah, if you've yeah. ever seen that, it's tremendous. It's very it's good, movie. good. Good movie. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I don't know. The demon, of course, wouldn't tell you whether he lost or won in the first movie, I suppose. But if you know what happened, it seems like he pretty much won. The priest yeah. is dead. The demon isn't. <laughs> yeah. And but, the priest yeah. like suffers for, for all that time. <laughs> like like this, just having to watch behind the, the eyes as he the, kills children and yeah. does all sorts yeah. of like horrible things. Are there any world leaders now, maybe of like religious groups or whatever, that you look at and you're like a little wary of? Like, ah, oh, you seem you seem a little Taylor Swift, a little demonic. <laughs> I think Taylor Swift. She does have a good of reputation. The religious she did. She did the thing. She did of. the thing. <laughs> hmm. Did she? Is she? Wait, what does that thing mean, Wendy? Oh, it's it, that, that's a that, that's just an Illuminati. Or that means she's going to eat that redhead yeah. from uh, from Game of Thrones' pussy. That's what that means. She's I was mixing it up with Kyle. I thought that was Jonas the vagina sign. I, I, I see it slightly different. I, I, I thought it was a o- Only slightly. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yes, because it's evil. Because, you know, uh, ox is dangerous. It, it is actually interesting. What is a Swifty? <laughs> it is interesting how much in like old folklore that like we you, like I know we're joking about it, but in a lot of old folklore, it was explicitly described as demonic. Like it's it's an evil. It's a, it's part of women's curse, like of Eve that like a part of the devil in, is embedded with her. There's a lot of imagery around like <laughs> this being explicitly demonic. Yeah. Oh, that's that's no good. <laughs> we've all seen alien okay and we know mm-hmm. the vaginas are bad they mean death what about the pope what's he up to do we need to keep an eye on him uh i'm not i'm not a big fan of catholicism i mean i've been open about this before i'm not a yeah. big fan of catholicism i don't like the idea of you have a religion and now you're like all right we got that whole god thing but let's let's just well, we can run it <laughs> let's yeah. put ourselves in charge you know so um I, w- I wouldn't say demonic or anything i think that uh Catholic beliefs still at its core align with Christianity as far as the beliefs of Jesus and redemption. It's everything after that that I'm not a fan of. Um, As far as I think there's a ton of religious groups from out history that I would describe, if not demonic, then like demon adjacent. uh, Whenever they take like ideas of Christianity and completely flip them around, like, for example, Church of Satan, the Anton LaVey and all that posers jokes it's uh, the, like they were just edge lords the entire synopsis of the the uh satanic bible is if god real why bad thing happened that's like that's their whole that's all yeah. they got um <laughs> uh, so i i'm not considering him some mastermind or whatever but i think instead religious groups who have like taken like large groups of people and then been like yeah oh you like god and jesus that's cool but what if what if you did it this way what if you changed a bit like for example um uh, i would say jim jones uh i would definitely consider him adjacent uh i would consider um Ervil LeBaron. He was one of the early mem- members of Mormonism who brought a bunch of people to the desert, ended up being a serial killer, like had his cult kill mass numbers of people. Um, wow. Yeah. Was I, I was, I'd say when was that? Better. I'm interested in that. Uh, Ervil LeBaron. I Ervil Redenbacher. S- he's, the, <laughs> he's the popcorn guy. <laughs> I want to <laughs> say it was... Hold on, let me just type it in. His name's Ervil LeBaron. People joke because if you take out the R, his name is Evil the Baron. Oh, uh, which... <laughs> It was, uh, yeah, like 1950s, 1960s it happened. Um, so there, yeah, there was this... Way more recent than I thought you were going to say. 